So consistency can be broken down. You might say, well, Caroline, I don't have five days a week to work with my horse an hour plus. I'm not talking about that kind. That would be great. I'm talking about every time you're with your horse, you need to have consistency because that's what shapes behavior. It's no different than training a dog to sit before he gets a bone or a treat. It's no different, different than telling your child at the dinner table every time you eat at the table, this is how we eat. So every time I'm out here with Lovey addressing her eye and all the meds that she has to get frequently throughout the day, there's consistency. There's a way that we work together and that we are together and that's consistency so if you only have 15 minutes you've got to get your horse and feed them before you go to work you've got to feed them when you get home it's winter time you don't have time you don't have an indoor you can have a ton of opportunity in those short periods that's called quality you can have a ton of opportunity to make an impression and change a behavior but you can't change it unless you have the skills the knowledge, the education, and you're following a curriculum. And the fourth, before you know it, you're going to have, you will have developed a really awesome foundation. Foundation doesn't happen in 30, 60, 90 days, people. When I used to take horses in for training, and I don't do that anymore, I just work with my own. I don't have horses in training. Um, 90 days was a minimum, 90 days. And all you're doing in 90 days is creating enough consistency in the repetitive nature of what you're doing constantly, the pattern recognition, that your horse starts to develop a new pattern. They start to develop a new pattern. 90 days is not foundation. When you talk to any professional trainer, and I'm gonna, whether it's raining or hunter jumper or dressage, it's years. It's years. And for me, I tell you guys all the time, you follow my curriculum, whether it's really is the online training courses because they were developed. Come here. Come here. Yep. Yep. I'm done with you. You pay attention. Thank you. So <laughs> that was a correction. She has enough education to have a slight correction there. So foundation in my method is about two years max for you guys if you follow my curriculum. For me, it, as a professional, depending on the horse, this is temperament, age, and experience, training experience. It can be six months to a year. And then that foundation is we've got beautiful, smooth, uh, fluid gates and transitions, walk, trot, and canter. We're able to trail ride. We are well-rounded. Um, we have enough experience, but experience isn't everything. And a lot of people will try to sell you on experience. Well, this horse has been trail riding for years. That doesn't mean shit to me. I have had so many clients' horses that have just come unglued because they want to put the horse into some sort of training and they want to follow my method and they're like, I've been riding trail riding for years and we've had no problem. Now I want to teach my horse something and my horse has come totally unglued. So your horse has to be able to handle pressure. That's another key word, another secret word. Handle pressure and not come unglued, not freak out, not shut down, not check out, stay with you while they're learning. So those four areas, your mindset, we've got to develop your mindset, train your eye, what does safety look like, what does it mean, your skills, you need to have some level of consistency and quality of consistency. If you don't have a lot of time, how can you break down what you're doing so that you have the mindset of your horse? And then foundation, how much time, most of the time, we don't luck out and get a horse with a great temperament. Most of the time, we don't. Most of the time, we inherit a horse with a lot of problems. And they're masked and disguised um, in so many various forms. Well, there just went lovey. Come here. There was your drop, spin, and roll back. I wouldn't have been wanting to ride that. Come here. So let's talk about that. Just a little bit, that was perfect. I don't know what that was, it sounded like 
the door in the barn. So could you guys, before that noise happened, you could see like how agitated Lovey is. She keeps moving around, she's restless. So this is training your eye to how agitated and restless Lovey is. She is not here like a more seasoned, mature horse like Sundance or Smokey or Legend or maybe even Zor, my big 2,000 pound Frisian sport horse. She's not there yet. So how can you tell? Busy feet are a busy mind. I say this all the time. Your horse is moving around, they're restless. They're anxious, low levels of it. You need to pay attention to that. Sure, she looks doped up and relaxed right now, but she doesn't have enough of that mindset. She hears the door which she's used to. She doesn't have enough of that mindset to keep her grounded and not reactive. Now, because of her level of training with me, I could easily get that back. Easily, meaning if I worked with her today, tomorrow, and on the third day, something happened like that that startled her, she would have a less reaction, less reactive. Um, she'd be less reactive by far and hopefully she wouldn't do a drop a shoulder spin roll back and go like she just did she's not crazy about paper the noise or white she's in one of my desensitizing series videos that's going to be coming out in this blog so she's not real crazy about this so that gets her gets her up too it's not very trusting right now so this is great for you guys you need to look at this stuff I mean, my gosh, I would have been on the ground. I would have been on the ground if I was sitting on her at Liberty right now because of that mindset. Don't take that for granted. And some of that is experience for your horse, but most of it is their mindset. Where's her mindset? Lovey also was trained to race. She only had one start and she was too slow so they did a lot of bad things to her in her thoroughbred training and one of them usually what they do is they take a white bag um, they'll do whatever they can to get these horses all hyped up on adrenaline whether it's drugs or emotional adrenaline and they'll do whatever they can to f figure out what bothers her to get her to run as fast as she can so this is excellent that she's standing here Excellent. All right. So now we're going to talk about being safe with horses. Being safe with a horse like Lovey relies on the following factors and in this order. What am I looking for? What do I need to develop and focus on to feel safe with, with a horse? Number one, got to have that relationship, that bond. And I keep coming back to that word. Or I kept coming back to it in this video. Relationship is number one, you guys. It's going to be the glue that binds everything. And what it means for you and the horse is that the horse considers you as part of their family. That's really important. And a lot of people don't talk about how important that is. When the horse considers you as part of their family and a family member that they want to protect, then they're not going to think about themselves or their needs first. Just look at the wild horses or even a domesticated um, mare mother of, with a newborn. She's going to do whatever she can to take care of that. She's going to be fiercely. Well, they're all different. They all have their own individual personalities and innate traits, what they're born with. But the mares, especially in the wild, they'll fight to the death to protect their baby. And there's one video out there on YouTube. I don't know how old it is, but it's a mother that had just given birth. She went out away from the herd, a mare, wild mare, and she had given birth and three young stallions came. She had just given birth and she does everything she can to not trample her baby and she doesn't as she keeps them away from her and her baby. And just at the end of this, when, when you know she's getting exhausted, and it's like 20 minutes into this video, her band, the band of mares, that's the herd that she belongs to, several of them come to her rescue and all of those mares fight those three stallions off and protect that baby. That's what you want. That's what my method is all about, you guys. 
teaches you how to get to that level with your horse. Lovey's very possessive. All of my horses are possessive of me, protective. They get jealous. They fight over me. And I'm not bragging about this. And I don't, I don't want them fighting over me to the point where I get hurt or they get hurt. I have gotten hurt, actually. I'm not bragging about that. I'm just making that a point because they're going to take care of you. I have slept with my horses on the ground, at night, in cots. I've never been stepped on. I sit underneath of them. Number one, developing the correct foundation and building blocks. You guys, take your time so it takes less time. Get your foundation down and you'll never have to repeat it. So one of the things I want to talk about again and emphasize like I do often in my videos about foundation is once it's there, it's there, it's done. You don't have to ride for months. For Lovey right now, we still need to tighten our foundation up. And you guys just saw how she reacted and like woke up. I'm purposely like tapping the paper right now to test her a little bit. And she's doing fantastic with that test and not flipping out. But Lovey's the type of horse still right now where she, she gets a little bit, you wanna call it fractious or ADD or a little bit of nervous energy, doesn't know what to do with herself, doesn't know how to ground. So grounding's really important, helping her to release endorphins and getting her to just relax and stay focused. That's part of her foundation, but right now I'm aware that there's certain things that we still need to tweak and refine for me to be 100% safe on her. Now, an example of something that would have flipped her out would have been my riding clinic I had earlier this year. And I was, everyone was mounted, and of course we're bitless and on, in bareback pads. And everyone's on my school horses, and I'm on Lovey, and we had some 25 mile an hour winds, and the auditors were sitting underneath this 20 by 20 white tent. And Lovey's fine with the white tent, but if the white tent starts to move, that's gonna stimulate her, trigger her a little bit. Uh, obviously, as I said, she has issues with white bags and white paper, and we're getting better with all of that. And so sure enough, the minute I said, and everyone's mounted looking at me as I'm getting ready to demonstrate an exercise, but we were all standing still and the group was pretty much lined up in front of me. Lovey and I were facing them. The tent was about 30 feet to our right. And as soon as I said, you guys just be ready to hang on to that tent if we get another gust of wind. And sure enough, the tent went up and it was staked in and everybody grabbed it, but it went up and made a big noise and, you know, was flapping about. Everybody's horse was excellent. They happened to be somewhat facing it. So they just got very alert and Lovey, all she did was she didn't drop a shoulder and, and bolt. She just kind of quietly spun around and faced it. I mean, I think she jumped too, but it wasn't anything crazy like what you guys just saw in this video.